Good afternoon, everybody. Good to see uh, everyone. It's nice to be back in uh, D.C. I left in April. I didn't think I was ever coming back. And uh, so uh, here I am, but I'm glad to be, glad to be here and uh, to see old friends. Wasn't quite sure uh, who my audience was. I never had the opportunity to attend uh, uh, AMSIS in the past, uh, but uh, glad to see a lot of my old friends uh, here. Uh, many of them are mentors uh, to me and already know uh, many of what you're going to see today, but I think there's some folks that this might be a little bit uh, new uh, for you. Um, so I will try to share that with you. One of the things I, I do think is, um, as we've been going on uh, with our, our shared services and the DHA, and I, I really see the, the services and the DHA, uh, TMA, Health Affairs, uh, you know, our, we are really changing. And uh, one of the things that's, that's happening is, or one of my favorite words that I use uh, when, I, when I'm out uh, talking a little bit is speed. And I think you will all agree that the speed of change uh, is upon us. And uh, I was a, uh, a uh, deputy director of the multi-service market at uh, Madigan Army Medical Center about 12 years ago. And I see General Farmer here, and uh, good to see you, sir. And, uh, you know, I, I will tell you it is, uh, it's a lot different now than it was before. Uh, there have been many, many battles waged, but I think our mindset uh, is, is changing, so I think it's all for the best uh, for us. So am I, I'm the slide turner. Uh, just give the chief next slide and he'll work. You got it? Next. All right, thanks. Uh, so you see, uh, you see here the uh, same slide. Uh, uh, General Robb had uh, uh, 29 slides. I have 40. You've seen 29 of them. Uh, so I, uh, that will conclude my brief at this, uh, this point. <laughs> Uh, but it, uh, like General Rob was saying, you know, we're really focusing on uh, that little uh, small box over there uh, highlighted. Uh, a lot has happened to, to focus on uh, health affairs and TMA that has now uh, moved over to be DHA with a different focus and the shared services. Uh, and a lot of that is happening uh, so that it'll make our system a lot more agile uh, and flexible so that we can really make a difference uh, as we go forward, especially as it relates to the speed of change of, of for us. Next slide. You also saw uh, this slide, that, and, and like uh, um, General Rob was saying, that things have happened very quickly. You know, from the stand-up of the, of the different task force that were going on, uh, from a, a, a planning efforts and, and the study that uh, really real, realized what the DHA model was going to be, uh, and then move into a, a period of time where it is now plan it, plan what you're going to do. And uh, I, I was fortunate enough to, to uh, fortunate enough, I was fortunate enough to sit on the EMISM Governance Task Force, having all that great experience uh, uh, from the early uh, 2000s, uh, and to really try to design it so that it's going to make a difference uh, for us. Uh, and I will tell you that uh, the services really worked uh, very closely together. It was a very collaborative effort. It was really with the big picture in mind of how do we make our system better um, and uh, a, a great effort on that part. So from, you know, the, the March of 12 uh, on into the March of 13, you know, about six months of planning of what that's going to look, look like, what was JTF CatMed going to look like, what, was, what were the multi-service markets going to look like, uh, what was health affairs and uh, TMA and that breaking that apart again. Um, uh, in, in moving forward with that. And then to March of 13, when it directed it uh, to go and execute it. And that's what we're in uh, today. We're in between IOC and FOC, and we're at day 429 uh, of that implementation, and we are moving fast. And part of that is the, the e, e MISMs, the E now, versus just the multi service market. Next slide. And here's where they are. So uh, as we looked at uh, the uh, multi service markets, there were actually 14 markets. Uh, if you go back to the D DMOC, one of those previous studies many years ago, uh, there were 70, I believe there were 77 markets that were identified out uh, across the country that uh, needed some kind of management of, of uh, the health benefit out there. But these were multi-service markets. This was the direct care system side of it. There were 14 out there across the world uh, that we, we could probably gauge uh, uh, some uh, experiences and some benefit and some efficiencies uh, for us. Uh, as our, our task force met, uh, our idea was to try to just, let's just take one uh, and uh, make, it, make a difference uh, to figure it out so that we get it right and move forward. Uh, that didn't fly very well. We wanted a bigger pick piece of the pie. 
uh, that where it became five, five multi-service markets. Those that had an ADPL of over 25, those had a, a beneficiary population of greater than a th uh, 100,000. You know, where could we get the multi-services together uh, to work more in collaboration with each other? Where will it make an impact on our system? Uh, that's where the five came from. And at the same time, you had this task force uh, going on that was looking at the joint task force CAPMED uh, to say what, what did that need to look like and what was going to be the purpose of that. And that merged, became, became also a multi-service market. So you had the five uh, plus the one. So it became the six multi-service multi markets to stand, uh, to stand up. So those are center, centers of gravity for our system. That's about 40% right now of, our, of the MHS. So if we can make a difference in these multi-service markets, we can make a difference for the MHS. Each one of these multi-service markets was going to be commanded by, or the thought was, uh, each one of these multi-service markets was going to be commanded by a flag officer. Uh, and each one of the services would have the, the lead in these areas. And you could see uh, the different uh, uh, leads uh, for the areas. I'm Tidewater. I'm the multi-service market uh, director for uh, Tidewater. Uh, and in two of those, Colorado Springs and San Antonio, that was going to rotate. Uh, between the two, Wilford Hall and Bamsey, uh, Colorado Springs, the, uh, the Academy, uh, and uh, Fort Carson. Uh, how do we uh, work that out to, uh, uh, to rotate them? We didn't have enough flag officers to go around, so we had to uh, make a little bit of a, a, a change, and uh, you see Colorado uh, commanded out there by Air Force Colonel at, at the moment. Uh, but we're all working together uh, to achieve the same common goal, and we'll see, uh, see how we, uh, we do going forward. Yeah, next. Yeah, so if, if you, uh, not that one. Okay. Uh, you saw this slide uh, from General Rob uh, as well, but I, I just want to focus on that little r red box, and that's the NCR Medical Directorate. I think we've made a, a lot of progress uh, under Admiral Bono's uh, leadership. If you, you look at it, uh, a Navy a two star is, is commanding the NCR. We have a, a General One Star Army commanding uh, Walter Reed. Uh, you know, even the merger between Walter Reed and Bethesda, huge uh, effort uh, to get that done. And now you have an Army uh, general commanding it, doing a, a fantastic job. And then at Fort Belvoir, if you haven't seen Fort Belvoir lately, what a, a beautiful hospital that is down there. And we have an Army, I mean, a, a Navy Nurse Corps captain uh, as the commander. Had a chance to visit uh, there yesterday. Uh, we were um, walking around the, uh, the command walked into where the residency uh, program was going on and had an Air Force uh, colonel give me a, a little bit of a brief on the residency program that's going on at Fort Belvoir. Growing to 45, uh, tri-service, uh, we're working together. We worked, uh, walked around up into the OR and the CSR area, um, had a, a, a Navy commander given a brief uh, of what was going on in, in the OR area and how they're really paying attention to the metrics uh, that are out there and it was, I was really pleased uh, to see that uh, at the deck plate, we're talking about the metrics and the OR dashboard and the, the different things that we're trying to look at. So it, it was very encouraging uh, with us. So, okay, go ahead. This is my uh, favorite slide uh, of, the, uh, of the group. This really is uh, the, the MHS governance environment that we're in. Uh, you, you can see the, the DHA and the services and you have those uh, organizing committees now, the MOG, the MBOG, the Medical Operations Group, the threes, the, the MPOG, which was the Medical Personnel Operations Group, the ones, uh, and the, med medical or the Military Medical Business Operations Group of, of the eights. And we've even evolved that we have joint MOG and MBOG meetings uh, now, the joint uh, MOG, MBOG, MPOG uh, meetings now. Uh, the services are really working very closely together. Uh, you know, I, I know I, I served on the MOG uh, for a period of time, uh, really working together, uh, could call each other up on the phone, uh, uh, get our viewpoints and figure out how do we make a difference, how do we get to a standard way of doing business uh, together. Uh, so I was really, really encouraged and, and that continues and that's, that's relatively uh, new for us. You know, we're only 429 days uh, into it. And if you think about health affairs and the policy and how we were doing things before, uh, where we had the integrating councils uh, over there, and I, I've heard different numbers, uh, you know, 400 integrating councils, 800 integrating councils. 
uh, and uh, you know, we didn't have enough people to go around uh, for these uh, integrating councils that were out there. So now it, it's more concise and it, and it goes to, the, to these AUGs uh, and then they, they forward recommendations up to the, uh, the MDAG, which is a, a new area for us. Under the EMISMs, we uh, have developed the CONOPS. Uh, we have agreement by the services of what the CONOPS are going to be. That was no easy task uh, in itself. That took some time, uh, that, but that gives us some guiding, guiding principles for us. That's different than it was 12 years ago. We didn't really have a, a CONOPS. We, we did have a task uh, that I don't think the services, um, uh, we all had our um, service priorities uh, for that uh, in the past. I think now we're, we're more uh, joined uh, together uh, with them. And you could see that uh, we have OPCON and, and TACON. I think for the, the uh, multi-service market, it's really, uh, it's not so much command and tr control, but it's help, help uh, with that unity of effort because all of us ought to be driving towards the same, uh, same direction. I think we're, and I think we're getting there, and I, and I see it at the deck plate uh, every day. You see two, uh, two small circles at the, at the bottom circle, uh, Navy Medical Center San Diego and Womack. Those are really single service markets, but they represent a large uh, piece of the pie. And so how do we get those uh, folks to be headed in the direction, the, the same direction that we are and take some of those principles that we're doing at the uh, multi-service market level and expand it? Uh, and I think uh, we've learned from last year to this year, uh, even it goes beyond uh, those multi-service markets, it's now the MTFs as well. So the, the, the services are going to be, in, in the service uh, MTFs are in alignment with that uh, as, as we go forward as well. So I think this really shows that, uh, you know, it's about orchestration of uh, the services and, and uh, what we're doing, and that's what we're all working uh, together. I think that if you look at it, it's confusing, but it does show the complexity of uh, what we're up against um, in our system. This is, uh, this is really the simplified version of what, what I was just talking about. Uh, the, scene, the SMAC, many of you already knew that 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 existed. That's uh, Dr. Woodson and the service SGs, and Dr. Rob uh, sit on, the, on that smack. And the medical deputies action group uh, is a new, I want to say new concept, but a new uh, governance document, uh, um, new governance entity. Uh, under the multi-service market task force, we wanted a governing board uh, for us to help uh, guide us and to tell us that we were headed in the right direction. I think we were missing that uh, 12 years ago. We did have a, a, a means to, uh, to handle disputes, but uh, really that was up the service channel uh, and then tried to, to resolve it that way. This takes it to a governing uh, body. Just like in the private sector, you would have a governing board, you would have one here. Uh, I, that group, by the way, meets on a weekly basis. That, that is a, a fast-paced, uh, um, moving system. Uh, each of those uh, groups uh, below also meet on a weekly basis. I served on the MOG. The MOG was uh, met on Mondays. We would get our slides on Friday night, uh, and then Sunday was your prep day uh, for the MOG, and, and uh, that's how fast uh, things were moving. Uh, and, but I think we're making uh, good, good progress with that. Next. So what does it, uh, enhanced mean? You know, if I, if I look back, uh, you know, 12 years ago, I, I, many of you remember uh, we used to have uh, 12 lead agents uh, across our system. Uh, we then downsized some of those. Uh, uh, we went to three TRICARE regional offices. But before that, we had the empowered lead agent. Uh, and the empowered uh, lead agent uh, had to go in and brief the DMOC on uh, the savings that, was, that were going on uh, for our system. And we learned a lot uh, from that. But that was a, a very good group. Uh, led by General Farmer uh, that uh, was in there to, to really identify some of those things that we could do, tri-service, multi-service together uh, to make a difference. So we learned a lot. Uh, the uh, lead agents then uh, downsized uh, to the three Tracker Regional Offices. Many of those lead agents then became multi-service markets uh, without the E. Uh, there was, a, you know, again, a, an attempt to try to collaborate and to make a difference. I don't think our, our measures in the direction that we, were, we needed to go were quite as clear as they are today. Uh, so I think we've made pro progress over, the over, uh, over time. Uh, the difference here with the E, you know, it's a single market manager. That uh, single market manager 
uh, has that responsibility. We changed our business planning process where it used to be each of the services, each of the MTS did their business plan. There was some roll up uh, to that. Then it rolled up to the, the TRICARE regional office. Uh, didn't know, uh, quite know how to, to gauge whether or not we were making a difference. Uh, and so with this, this round of uh, the enhanced multi-service markets, uh, we're looking towards uh, you know, managing and allocating that, the budget. We're not quite there yet on how to, how to do that. I think the NCR is uh, further along than the other uh, emisms in doing that. But really is to get to those common clinical uh, business practices across our market. And I could tell you it is different. Uh, you know, I, I have Langley and Eustis and, and uh, Portsmouth in mind, and uh, we, we, each of those uh, services do things just a little bit differently. So we're trying to attack it from a product line perspective. If you look at gastroenterology, for example, you know, we have a large uh, amount of deferrals and uh, we have a large amount of unfilled appointments. So why is that? And so we have to continue to tr try to drive that so that we're make making use of the direct care system um, uh, at, at the most. I think the, the key here for this time around with the enhanced multi-service markets is that third bullet where it says direct the movement of workload and personnel and uh, the workforce of the MTFs. You know, if you look back 12 years ago, uh, I, General Peake was the, the Surgeon General of the, of the Army at the time, and I can remember sitting in with General Dunn uh, as he was bri uh, briefing General Peake, and General Peake would say, what resources are you moving around in the market? And I think the services at that point were really reluctant to uh, put a Navy person at Madigan or an Army person out at, at Bremerton and the like. So there was a lot of reluctance to, to do that. We were looking at um, disease management uh, back then. And if, if the, uh, for, from the market perspective, if you could look at the whole market and you say, well, what disease management processes do you need to try to manage? You would say, well, let's do asthma and diabetes. Uh, and then the Air Force would say, well, we're doing asthma and cardiovascular risk reduction. So we weren't all on the same, uh, same sheet of music. But I think this time around, uh, we're doing a pretty good job of trying to get unified uh, in that effort. And then uh, uh, develop and execute and monitor the business plan performance. You know, our business plan is different uh, this time around. It's a market business plan. A lot of work was done to, to uh, put the DEMISes together under one DEMIS. Uh, so you're not looking at each in MTF uh, individually you're looking at the, that one market and how is that market uh, doing and performing. At the EMISM level, it's our job to look at the individual MTFs and to see who's, what the contributions are or, or what level of productivity is, is at, at what point. Uh, but at, at the uh, higher level with the MDAG performance, it's how are we doing as a market. So I think we're, that, that's a good thing. The business planning cycle changed from uh, you know, a three-year cycle to a five-year cycle. We're getting better at that. Uh, how do you tie that into the POM? We're getting better at, at that. Uh, as you look at your POM submissions, is it for the market? Is it for individual MTFs? Because it's about the market making a difference. And how do we get everybody on the same sheet of music? So I think that, that uh, that's a big change. That's what that E represents. A lot of times I see that E is a small E, but I believe that's a, it's, it's a capital E for us. Uh, What's different, you see that, uh, like I was just uh, talking a little bit about, the market oversight is different. The multi-service market director uh, has that responsibility. He gets to come in and, and talk with the, uh, the MDAG uh, on a quarterly basis uh, and brief uh, the, the performance of the market. Uh, the performance planning shifted from that three-year to the five-year uh, uh, timeline. Uh, and it's really uh, more coordination, the unity of effort, the collaboration uh, that we have <coughs> between our managed care support contractor, um, uh, the MTFs, uh, the other partners that are uh, in that market, um, and I think that that'll make a difference. I, I, I'll just put a shout out, in, in my market uh, in Tidewater, you know, we asked uh, HealthNet, who's our, our contractor, uh, we need you to help us uh, to reduce enrollment in the private sector uh, for you, and they've done a fantastic job. We've gone from about 53,000 on the private sector side to 44,000, uh, and they've done, you know, I just, I, I can't say enough good things about them uh, really helping us uh, do, do that. Then I, you would see uh, that coordination effort that's gonna go on, uh, really referrals and appointing, how do we look across our system, uh, that it's one way, it's not, uh, you know, Langley doing it one, one way, and if they can't get a, an appointment, they just send it out to the market. 
We really, what is that process so that we send it and keep it inside the direct care system? Um, a new concept uh, for us. But it's not about in, uh, one individual facility, it's about the market. Next. This really, uh, you know, concept of operations for us, uh, you know, the EMISM office, it's not a very big office. Uh, is tasked with that collaboration between the MTFs, the managed care support contractor, uh, and the MDAG. And the, and the difference between now and then is that we have this governing, governing council for us uh, to give us that guidance and to measure our performance um, uh, going forward. And then it's my job as the multi-service market guy to, to lean on the uh, MTF commanders uh, to, uh, and to identify what areas I need them to uh, do better performance with. But uh, those relationships are uh, still evolving. There's no, uh, I don't write fit, rest, fit reps uh, or fitness reports on those MTF commanders, uh, but it's a, it is a collaborative effort. Uh, if I have a, a, a conflict, I'd, I would really like to get to a conflict so I can go to the MDAG and, and, uh, as, and ask them to do what we, we've designed for them to do. Um, but we haven't had to do that yet. And because that, I think we all are uh, working in closer collaboration. <clears throat> this is uh, another uh, really good slide, but I think this, this uh, talks about our performance review cycle. And the, if you look at the, it, it on the far left-hand side, you see the markets. Each of those markets work in collaboration with their MTFs, uh, identify those product lines and those initiatives inside the market that are going to make a difference. You put some money uh, to it and uh, predict what your outcome is going to be. Uh, and these are the centers of gravity for our system. One thing new that we have is uh, those DHA, DHA analytics uh, that have done a, a, a good job over time in uh, putting our uh, scorecard uh, together, uh, developing what those calculations are. Um, lots of uh, discussion has gone back and forth between the EMISMs and the DHA analytic uh, cell to uh, come up with those definitions. We're not all in agreement on what those are, but uh, we, I think we're um, marching uh, to that tune, and I think that's going to be a good thing for us. And then as, as we go forward, those uh, metrics will be our report card. We get to come see the MDAG and defend uh, what we've done over the last quarter, or, or to be able to explain uh, what, what's happening in our market, you know, catastrophic uh, illnesses, uh, uh, deployments, uh, what's impacting the, our, the way uh, our business uh, so that we can achieve what we're we're supposed to achieve. And then we get help <clears throat> as well from the joint MOG MBOG. That bus our business plan is, has gone through the joint MBOG last year uh, for the first time. They gave us a uh, rudder order. Uh, they gave us uh, criticism of our, our plans. Uh, some were more specific than others, uh, but we learned from that. Uh, we're in the business planning cycle this time uh, right now. Uh, I think we'll be a lot more specific uh, this time, a lot more uh, predictive of what the outcome that we want uh, going forward, and then we'll see how well we can do, uh, how, how well we can move uh, to make a difference uh, in that going forward. Okay, <clears throat> next. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> this is uh, sort of the business, the business, not sort of, this is the business planning uh, summary from last year. If you uh, roll up all of the, uh, uh, the markets, uh, you can see uh, 1.7 million uh, eligibles out there. You can see the breakdown of the MTFs and the managed care support contractor, really the capability and impact that we can uh, have on the system. And if you look at the initiatives that we're doing, um, uh, how they align with the quadruple aim for us, and then you can see the numbers, numbers there. Uh, but so we are attacking, uh, attacking uh, or moving towards that quadruple aim. And then if you look at what we have to do over the next, uh, <clears throat> over the fit up, is we, we need to get to a $1 billion savings uh, for our system. Um, we need to uh, bite that off in smaller chunks. Uh, this is uh, FY15. Uh, 14 was a, a shadow year for us. We, like I said, we've, we've learned a lot. Uh, we need to uh, break it down into to smaller chunks. I, I uh, talked to my chief of staff for the multi-service market and I'm saying, what, what's the result? What's our number? Uh, where are we at and what's the glide slope um, of uh, our progress in, in getting to what we're predicting is going to be our re the result at the end of the year. Uh, so I think that, that that's good for us and that, that's been an evolution as we've gone, gone by. 
<clears throat> this is our dashboard. Uh, it's a you know it's a busy slide. You saw a little bit of that uh, with General Rob, uh, but I think uh, the, the important thing here is you can see what those measures are. Uh, we are now looking at those at each uh, in, in each market. Uh, we're watching our trends. Are they going up or down? Uh, from FY14 to 15, we changed uh, the emisms uh, in the services. Uh, we're very vocal about what was going on in the FY14. Did we have good measures? Did we not have good measures? Uh, and so we've, we uh, have spent a lot of time on developing what those measures might be uh, to make a difference uh, in our system. We added four measures uh, this year on, in satisfaction. Uh, I know from a Navy medicine perspective, we, we dropped satisfaction out of our readiness value and joint. Uh, that may have been a mistake for us because we really need to focus on the satisfaction. You know, we've got the TRIS and the TROS and the different uh, uh, tools that we have out there. Uh, so we're bringing that back in to see how well we're doing from a market perspective. The total purchase care uh, cost uh, for us, I think you can see that our purchase care cost is probably going to go up, uh, but that's because we're pulling more enrollees in. But you ought to see that our cost per enrollee goes down. Uh, so, I, I, so if that is happening, uh, then we're moving in the right direction. <clears throat> in the Tidewater area, I've asked uh, my director, I, I want to know the purchase care cost per each MTF. Uh, and uh, Tidewater or Portsmouth uh, has a purchase care cost per enrollee of around $63 uh, per month. So what is the cost uh, of purchase care cost for Langley and Eustace? And if I may mark it, then those, that uh, trend for those two MTFs ought to be the same as Portsmouth, because those are the same beneficiaries that ought to be in the MedSend as well. So we'll continue to, to watch uh, through that, watch that. <clears throat> the retail pharmacy effort, uh, you know, that's a major effort in one of the shared services uh, for us. Uh, that uh, a change in, in policy and direction, that shows great promise in the savings that we're going to have uh, for our system. We've got to move out of the retail system and back into the direct care system, so we're working and uh, uh, getting there. Uh, so I think we're moving in the right direction. And then we look at uh, primary care leakage and uh, the, that recapture. So I think those are our metrics. We'll be reporting those uh, on a quarterly basis uh, to the MDAG and defending our position as well. <clears throat> and this is my last slide, uh, uh, really. So what, what, what have been our successes uh, over time? We see that uh, some uh, productivity standards across our system, some of the multi-service markets are, doing, are out front of, uh, of the others so that we can pull in from each, each other, learn from each other, uh, and, uh, and, and employ those at our different multi-service markets. So we're having a, a lot better EMISM uh, coordination and collaboration. One of those uh, OGs is not really an OG, but it's uh, the EMISM leadership group. Uh, we have an opportunity every month to meet, meet together uh, and uh, talk about uh, common business practices or lessons learned or, or things that we can do uh, better. Uh, and then where, where can we really make a difference across uh, all those markets? So I think that EMISM, uh, inter-EMISM communication is really making a difference. Our enrollment in those multi-service markets uh, is increasing. Uh, we're, we're, that is movement in the right direction. Uh, two, two of those uh, unfilled appointments and total purchase care costs were measures of our FY14. We had some successes in those in some of the markets and not so well in some of the others. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, if the M MDAG is defining uh, what they want us to do, then I think we'll, we'll be able to, to uh, march in that direction. So that's a little bit about where we are with our emisms. Uh, lots of change in the speed and the, the pace of our change uh, is uh, is rapid, and I think all of us in the services are, are coming together to do that. So thank you very much. <laughs>